What's up, everybody? We are back. John Delarose here, Delarose.com, D-E-L-A-R-R-O-Z.com. You can head over to my newsletter there and sign up and get a free graphic novel. It's been a while since I've done a Donald Duck book by Carl Barks, and I think this is the sixth one that I've done. The Terror of the Beagle Boys. Here we go. So this one's interesting. There were no uh, one-page gag stories in this volume and every volume has a mixture of like 30 page like full adventure stories uh some of them have a lot of those uh 10 page sort of you know uh i guess middle of the road stories and then one page gag stories it says zero one page gag stories which is really interesting uh <clears throat> it it all these stories were done in 1951 and most of them appeared in four color comics and uh, it's Carl Barks is really actually just getting better as each of these volumes go along. They do go in chronological order, even though they aren't labeled such. They're just called The Terror of the Beagle Boys like this. Uh, and you can pick up any one. There's no continuity or anything like that because that doesn't exist here. But in the back, there's, there's a handy list of where did the stories first appear. And there's also usually, where's the list? Where, where's the list? These are extra covers uh, that he did at the point. But there's a, usually a list in the books of, of the volumes, and you can kind of go here. Uh, where are they? I don't know. Maybe they're in the front. But somewhere in this book, and somewhere in all these books, there's a list of the volumes uh, of what they are, so you can kind of know what order if you want to read them in chronological order as they came out. Uh, like I said, it doesn't matter. They're all they're all pretty good. This first one actually introduces the Beagle Boys, and this is the first appearance of the Beagle Boys, as uh, Scrooge is trying to keep his money safe as usual right and um uh, it all kind of backfires and the beagle boys start cleaning up some of the money so it's pretty cute this next one's really interesting which is dangerous disguise and this is a spy story and donald duck gets caught up in the spy deal now what's very interesting is almost every comic that carl barks does the humans humans i should say ha are like really dog people and they have little dog noses and everything like that but in this one all the humans are actual normal humans. And it shows that Carl Barks actually has a lot of depth as a cartoonist and can really draw anything. He draws he draws the girls pretty. Um, he draws people very well. You, you do, wouldn't necessarily know that from, you know, everything else he's drawn in here. But this spy story is really fun, and there's a really long one. And uh, all, there's all these Agent X and Counter Agent and Counter Agents of it, Counter Agents. Really funny stuff. Um, and eventually... Uh, Donald Duck gets confused with a matador who looks just like him and uh, ends up having to bullfight to prove that he's uh, who he says he is. And it turns out, of course, that the lady he was chasing uh, was actually on the good guy team. So pretty good. This might be my favorite uh, story in here, Dangerous Disguise. I thought it was really fun. Once it got into the matador stuff, I was just thrilled. I thought it was really funny. Uh, so that's good stuff. And uh, we've got a lot of money-themed stories here. This one, uh, Donald Duck is in debt and uh, wants to get out of it. And so he is working for Uncle Scrooge. Uncle Scrooge is diving into his money here. The, you know, he starts to... Scrooge really becomes a character over these volumes, uh, which is really fun. Um, and Donald Duck becomes a debt collector for Uncle Scrooge. And what happens eventually is Donald Duck ends up loaning out a ton of money rather than uh, doing anything for it. And Scrooge gets kind of mad at him. I think we're into a different story now. Are we? Yeah. Um, and uh, that's it. So <laughs> the next one, uh, the kids all are going out. And they're trying to train a St. Bernard uh, to rescue people and in the snow. And uh, they're working on it for their merit badges for their junior woodchucks, which is always a fun thing for Huey, Dewey, and Louie. And uh, eventually it just works out on that. So good story here, really fun. I, I There wasn't anything I really disliked. I'll get to one that I was like not thrilled with, but uh, we'll go over that later. This next one uh, is, uh, there's a ship that sank and Scrooge wants to find it. And they're trying to get Donald Duck a job. And Donald Duck's like, I'm the greatest snake charmer in the world. <laughs> very bizarre, uh, but but also very funny. And they go to like this psychologist who like says that Donald Duck should be a detective. And uh, they go and try to find this lost ship. They eventually find it. There's this huge dragon. Uh, so interesting supernatural stuff. Sometimes that happens in these stories and sometimes it doesn't. But in this one, you get a, 
a sea monster. And Donald Duck lulls it with his plane. So uh, that all ties in with the snake charmer thing. And eventually uh, the guy comes back and says, oh, he shouldn't have been a detective. I made a mistake. He's going to be the world's best snake charmer. Very cute ending. Uh, Donald Duck, I hate work. Work, work, work. This is a cute one. And uh, we get a lot of Gladstone Gander, who's Donald Duck's co uh, cousin in the back of this one. And he's like, I'm just going to get free money. Watch. And uh, in this one, it's interesting, is the money supply of Scrooge's all gets out into the town. And once it does, everybody refuses to work. This is very, uh, very interesting. Uh, almost anti communist uh sort of story here because all the all of scrooge's money just like it's evaporated and everybody gets it gets it and at some point nobody wants to work anymore because they all have money and so then just something like eggs costs like ten thousand dollars an egg so uh eventually scrooge gets his money back because he uh um is the only person who has goods when all these people have money so uh the money supply goes back down and everything resets very interesting um, this is a really cute one where uh, the kids try to mess with Donald Duck and they keep getting foiled in that. Uh, and I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that one a lot. Old California. This is another great one. They go back into the old California and they, they start to live amongst uh, the, the Spanish dons back then. And you get a lot of uh, get a lot of uh, cool stuff. Like I said, you know, he usually draws the people as dogs. And so... Uh, you get that for the for everything else. That was like a one-off strange thing in that one story. But it turns out they were just given some, some quote, medicine. That's which is another interesting thing. You wouldn't expect that in 1950. So they were hallucinating that whole experience. <laughs> really funny. Um, this one, let's see. Donald Duck and Gladstone. This is uh, probably my favorite of the Gladstone adventures, are fighting over trying to be, uh, become... Uh, the leads in a play with Daisy. So uh, they fight together, and Huey, Dewey, and Louie uh, end up uh, becoming the lead in it, which is very funny. This one, Donald uh, hates gardening, and so he builds a pool, and everybody in town learns he has a pool, so they all kind of harass him and go in his pool. <laughs> very fun stuff, too. Uh, the next one is a, I, think, I feel like this is a classic one uh, that, that a lot of people kind of know. But uh, there's a, a coin, rare coin, and Donald Duck finds rare coins in it. And this is, again, a money supply story that's very similar to the one we just saw. Because as soon as Donald uh, gets a ton of rare coins, which Scrooge had all of them in his possession, uh, he devalues uh, the coin in the collector market because he flooded the market with them. And then uh, comes back and... Uh, uh, finds another coin, uh, despite Scrooge's intentions of kind of messing with him on that. So, cute one. More Gladstone. And this one is a Gladstone luck thing. And I always, I, I'm always impressed with how the Gladstone luck thing, it doesn't just, like, you always think that's just going to work once and it's going to be a, how how could he possibly make it interesting again? And, and it, I dread the stories at the beginning because of that almost every time. And I'm like, this is not going to be that interesting. Then I get into it, and there's always a twist on the Gladstone luck that I do actually end up interested. So Donald actually gets very lucky over the course of this and wins a golf tournament against Gladstone. And everybody, and you're just like, why? How could he? And uh, Gladstone wins a prize for being the unluckiest golfer. <laughs> is what ends up happening. So we get another woodchuck story at the end of this. So this they kind of develop in that. And... Um, Donald tries to up show the, the kids by building his own stuff. And of course, his his work is shoddy, so it just wrecks their day. But then the kids end up rescuing uh, the Scoutmaster and promoted, get promoted anyway. All right, so here's the one story that like really was not for me. And it wasn't it wasn't my favorite. And it turned out that uh, after I looked back on this, Grandma Duck, it's, it's very weird because there's a bunch of characters that you don't see in here. It features Daisy and Grandma and Gus, uh, and then these these mouse characters who, uh, you know, are, are, are sort of in other Disney stuff, but you don't really see it in Carl Barks stuff very much. Um, and basically, Daisy's moving in, the mice are forced to move out, and then this, uh, this, uh, this mean character here 
uh, I forget his name, but he uh, he comes in and, and sticks him up, and then the mice save the day. So it, the dialogue's just not as, as snappy. It's not as funny. Uh, it's not as witty, uh, and so it just felt off compared to everything else. And then I, I went into the contents, and it was like, oh, Carl Barks didn't actually write this one. Makes sense. Two more, I think, two more stories left, or maybe one more. Uh, oh, kids want to play hooky from school. Uh, this is another classic trope of Carl Barks. And so they do so, and uh, eventually they, they screw up and end up at a truant officer's luncheon. So I guess that's it. Very cool. So 10 out of 10, beautiful stuff. Uh, these books just keep getting better every single volume. It's amazing. So I'm very thrilled. This is one of the better ones probably to start with. Uh, so if you really just want to enjoy some Donald Duck, this is a high recommend on this front. All right, we'll be back soon. Talk to you later.